Now one more thing you can do, not something you have to do, but something you can do is to... What's up Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day here on the homestead. A little bit of cool in the air. Starting to feel like fall a little bit. Fall's gonna come early this year it looks like. I'm pretty caught up in the garden, caught up in the greenhouse with my seeds starting. So I figured it was a good time to give you guys an update on a lot of these plots out here. It's been a while since we showed you what's going on in every single plot. So let's walk around, let's do a little garden tour, show you what's happening in all 10 or 11 of our plots. And then the last plot we're going to look at, which has our climbing beans and our climbing field peas, we need to do a little work in there and, and help those guys out a little bit. So let's start off out here in these six plots we call the dream garden. This plot right here has a tarp on it. This is where we had our spring summer watermelon plot. Got that cleaned up, put this tarp on it. And it's been sitting on here for a few weeks now. And pretty soon, we'll probably do this on an upcoming video, we need to pull back that tarp and uh, probably give this a little water, may inject a little fish emulsion. So we'll pull back that tarp soon, check on how that's doing, make sure we keep that soil nice and moist. And I think I'm gonna use this entire plot here to plant a bunch of garlic come November. Have it, you know, completely decided that's what I'm gonna do here, but it's what it's looking like. So we need to make sure we keep that soil nice and moist and keep all the biology alive under there until we get ready to plant that garlic. And behind that plot is where we have our chicken tractor currently. So we've got this row of Valencia peanuts right here. Not really sure when I'm supposed to dig these. I'm kind of waiting on to see when the commercial guys around here start digging their peanuts and then I may start scratching around. They don't look that great, but they look okay. Hopefully we get some peanuts out of here. I don't know that it's gonna be a stellar harvest, but we'll see what we get. Then we got our soybean cover crop here where the chickens are feeding on it. You can see right there where they've been and then where they've yet to go. They're taking it down pretty good. And I think probably if we let them go two times around this plot, they'd have it pretty much cleaned up. I don't know how much this stuff is gonna grow back. It's growing back a little bit, but not a lot. So they're enjoying that. Have been giving them a little bit of chicken food here and there. I give them a scoop every couple days or so, but they've mostly been eating all this soybean foliage here. So my original plan for this plot was to let the chickens graze it twice and then it should be pretty good worked over by then, maybe till it one time and then we we're going to plant a lot of our cool season veggies here. Cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, a lot of things like that. But recently with our new raised bed plan that we're going to try to execute and get, you know, going for fall. I don't think I need to let these chickens graze it twice because if we're putting raised beds in there, we're gonna be adding a lot of soil or whatever in those. And so I don't know that the crops in the raised beds are gonna really benefit from the chickens being on it twice. And we need to get it cleaned up to start putting those raised beds in there. So I think after the chickens graze this once, assuming the raised bed plan does come together, then I'm gonna move them onto another plot. So just let them go over it one time, knock it down a little bit, and then we'll get it cleaned up and start installing our raised beds, hopefully. And then over here in this no-till plot, which was supposed to be completely a fall pumpkin plot, we planted five, six rows of polar bear pumpkins in here. And as you can see, we only have that side left. And that's kind of a recurring theme you'll see in this video lost a lot of our fall pumpkin transplants guess it was just too hot they just couldn't hang not really sure why those over there made it and these over here didn't really make it anyway i came in yesterday wheel hoed this a little bit it was getting a little weedy got it cleaned up a little bit those plants over there look great look like they're going to do just fine but now we've got a good bit of open space right here where I feel like we need to plant something. Now those pumpkins will roam a good bit, but I feel like we can squeeze something in right here. So the other day I went to the barn to grab a few taters off our storage rack for supper. We still got a decent amount of taters in there. They're in really good shape, still good to eat. But I also noticed that I had quite a few, some nice sprouts on them like this. And I felt like they were just talking to me saying, plant me, plant me. So 
I'm thinking that an open space right there would be a good opportunity to try fall taters again. We did all right with it last year. I think maybe we can do even better with it this year. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me plant some of these sprouted taters like this. Show you how we can grow fall taters around here. We need to get them planted soon if we're going to do it. But let me know if that's something you want to see. Then behind that no-till plot, we've got some more fall pumpkins and then one row of peppers still hanging on. These peppers have done pretty good considering I haven't really fertilized them a lot. When we did our soil test back in the spring, this was our most fertile plot as indicated by those soil tests. And these peppers look really, really healthy most of their kind of grow out. But now they look like maybe they could use a little fertilizer. Maybe they've run through all the soil nutrients that were in this fertile plot. So probably going to take some AgriThrive fruit and flower, maybe just kind of pour it alongside each plant, get some of these puppies nice and green again. And then as far as the pumpkins in here, this is the warty goblin variety, and we had much higher transplant survival with this variety than any of the other varieties. I don't know if it has to do with the variety, has to do with the plot, or what. But most of these made it. You can see we've got a pretty full row there, and got a pretty full row over there. Got a few little gaps in there, but most of these made it. Most of them are looking pretty good. Looks like we may have a little bit of mildew onset there, which is just expected this time of year with the humidity. We'll just try to kind of push them through it. Probably need to fertilize these soon. Looks like this variety has kind of a bush growth habit starting off, but I imagine they'll start to vine sooner or later. Really happy with how these are looking so far. We've been keeping them fed with the drip tape. Sometimes on real hot days, they'll look a little pitiful in the middle of the day and then they'll recover, you know, at night and look fine the next morning just you know kind of suffering a little bit when it's really really hot but as temperatures cool these things should get much much happier then moving along here in the dream garden we got another no-till plot here this plot's only been no-till for a year or so recently did some cleanup in here but still have a decent amount growing so i did some cleanup right here we had a uh, late planting of squash over there that did just okay once it got hot really stopped producing even though the plants looked okay we had some flowers right here got a little eye control so i mowed that and wheel hoed it working on getting it cleaned up a little bit so we can plant something there at some point our giant marigolds are just still doing awesome still hanging in there really really well now i think the orange ones seem to be a little more vigorous than the yellow ones so we planted just as many yellow transplants as we did orange but you can see we got a lot more orange in here than we do yellow so the orange seems to be a little tougher than the yellow is and we have cut these back hard three or four times we need to cut them back again so it's not like we come in here and meticulously remove every bloom i just take my shears and come in here and just grab a handful of plant foliage and just trim them back real hard and then they just keep growing back and keep looking more beautiful and beautiful so couldn't be happier with these having them strung up with that florida weave really really helps that's definitely the way to go with these giant marigolds and uh, we've just been enjoying these for a long long time and probably will be enjoying them for at least another few months here until it gets really really cold and then this little gap right here we had some giant sunflower stalks some plants that were just kind of toast i got those out of here got that little sliver cleaned up and then we have our sweet taters here which we have three rows but it's all just kind of merged together at this point now something was eating on these pretty bad and i kind of ignored these being way over here in the corner and i shouldn't have now they look better than they did a week or so ago i sprayed them with some of Zara. seems to be getting better i probably need to hit them one more time hopefully it doesn't affect the actual sweet taters down there in the ground but something's been working on the leaves pretty hard here maybe we can get that under control i think we're probably getting ready to dig these maybe the end of august early september i have to go back and see exactly when i planted but you know 100 110 days after planting they should be ready to dig so hopefully we get some good harvest out of here even though the leaves look kind of rough then behind our sweet taters we've got a pretty thick cover crop here of pearl millet now it's nice and thick it's doing its job as far as ground cover weed suppression but some of the plants look kind of rough. I'm seeing a lot of this on top of the leaves there. A little browning there. And I haven't grown a lot of pearl millet 
or a lot of millet in general so i'm not sure what's causing that not sure if it's some kind of pathogen or some kind of nutrient deficiency in the soil not sure what's going on here but still relatively happy with it because we got the good ground cover there so this is where the chickens are going to go as soon as they're done making one round on that soybean cover crop over there i probably am going to have to mow this before we put the chicken tractor on it just because it's so thick it should regrow back just fine so we'll put our mower on its high setting knock it down a little bit put the chickens on here and let them make a couple rounds i think this is where we're going to end up planting most of our onions this year and as far as figuring out what's wrong with this millet here i've told you before i'm not one to really chase nutrient deficiencies while a cover crop is in the ground so what we'll do after the chickens graze it but before we plant any onions or anything else here i will test the soil just to see if maybe it was a nutrient thing maybe it's not nutrient related at all but it's something i'm keeping an eye on i may run some fish emulsion through the overhead sprinkler if we need to water this anytime the next couple weeks see if that changes anything but i don't really want to chase it right now it's just something i'm keeping you know in the back of my mind that i do need to certainly test this plot before we plant any onions here then over here behind the dream garden on the back half of the property right here we have more fall pumpkins this is the cargo variety which makes a large you know big orange jack-o-lantern and this variety had the highest mortality rate as far as transplants go than any of the other varieties and i'm really not sure why i thought these were going to do really good planting them into the pine straw because we had some good moisture conservation there but a lot of them just never made it i think we have seven or so decent looking plants here and they just struggle during the middle of the day a lot of times i have to come out here with a water hose and a little nozzle and just give them a little splash to help them make it through the heat of the day you can see they look a little wilty right now so i don't know if this is a varietal thing seems to me that they don't get you know any more sun than some of those out there do so not really sure why these are suffering i can run the drip all night and they'll have plenty of water underneath that straw and they'll still look kind of rough in the middle of the day the bigger the plants get the more resilient they seem to be but it's been a little bit of a struggle keeping these things going initially beside those cargo pumpkins we've got our glass gem corn here that we'll be harvesting pretty soon some of the ears have started to fall not all of them but all these stalks are pretty much dry and crispy so in the next week or two we'll be coming in here and harvesting all this seeing all the cool colorful patterns we have on all the ears and then i'll get this mowed down and cleaned up probably going to plant some kind of fall veggie in here not really sure what yet maybe some root veggies uh, on this little spot right here but uh should be able to get it cleaned up turned over pretty quick even though that corn is dried up there's not near as much you know foliage shading the soil it stayed pretty clean in there which means we should be able to turn this over pretty quickly and then on the end here we've got our turmeric that we mulched a couple videos ago it seems to be doing a lot better in the heat of the day it'll curl up the spot's not as shaded as it needs to be for turmeric but it's probably the most shady spot i have of all my in-ground gardens i don't really have any in-ground garden spot that is in complete shade which these plants kind of prefer hopefully they start doing a little bit better as things cool off a little bit but the weed suppression with the mulch seems to be working so far right now probably gonna put some pine straw around these when they get just a little bit taller just keep trying to smother out those weeds and in the plot behind that we've got more peanuts and got a lot of okri so this row here was our first planting of okri and some of these plants look like they're about done they never really did a whole lot and i think it had a lot to do with just how dry and hot it was it was a struggle just keeping them alive earlier in the year and they never really thrived now down the end there those dwarf longhorn or cowhorn plants did the best out of this trial here and we're still getting some harvest off those those plants look okay but this first plant in the okra right here is pretty much done then we've got our virginia jumbo peanuts here which look really really good in my opinion if i'm comparing them to what all the commercial peanuts around here look like they don't look quite as good as the big boys peanuts but they look pretty good a lot better than those valencia peanuts not really sure why 
but uh, I'm pretty hopeful here. I think we're going to get a pretty good harvest out of these. Have several big old pots of boiled peanuts coming for football season. Then lastly in this plot, we got three big, nice, full rows of this Ruiz Oakery variety. So we direct seeded these. They came up very, very uniformly, as you can see. We thinned them out to about one plant every, I don't know, 8 to 12 inches or so. So these are looking really, really good. Haven't noticed any flowers yet, but I'm hoping to see some soon so we can get some good harvest off these before it gets too cold around here. Should be able to save quite a bit of seed from these plants once they start producing. Couldn't be happier with how this is looking. I've just been trying to keep it clean uh, for right now until we get a little more foliage to kind of shade out in between those plants. And I can't wait to start harvesting this stuff. Over here on the other side of the barn, we've got our beans and peas. We're going to skip over this plot for right now because we need to do a little work in here. Let's go check on these watermelons real quick. So as I told you several videos ago, I'm just plum tickled at how this late summer slash fall watermelon experiment is going for us. Just beautiful, beautiful plants in here. Starting to get lots of blooms on these plants here. And even though it's the middle of the day right now, I've been noticing the bees in here working this plot hard, which hopefully means we get some really good production out of here. Got a few weeds in there. I need to try to sneak in there and pull before they uh, put down seeds everywhere. We got some nice thick foliage here, good ground shading, and I'm really, really hopeful. And since this foliage is so thick, it's kind of hard to see any watermelons in there. But if you look real close, you can find a few here and there. So that one right there, that's going to be a crimson sweet watermelon, I believe. That's what we planted on this end row here. So got a nice looking fruit there. And then we got another one right here. That looks like an Alibaba watermelon right there. It's kind of funky shaped like those ones we grew earlier this year. Not sure what's going on there. Well, that's some odd shaped watermelons. So those Alibaba watermelons are a little confusing to me. The guy, Alan, one of our viewers that recommended that variety, has sent me pictures of his harvest and he's just got nice, consistent, beautiful watermelons, a whole buggy load of them. But mine just seem to be all kind of funky shaped. They're pretty good to eat, but the size is not consistent at all. I think we had another viewer that said one time he grew them, they were all consistent. Another time he grew them, they were kind of wonky like ours are. So I don't know if it was just the seed batch I got is producing wonky fruits or something I'm doing wrong. Not sure what it is. I don't think it's a pollination issue because like I said, I've seen plenty of pollinators in here. So I don't know why some people can grow really pretty Alibaba watermelons and I can't, but either way, they taste pretty good and we're going to enjoy them. And for those of you wondering what the ducks were going to eat now that there was no more watermelon, well, they have moved on to muscadines now. They figured out they can reach up and grab a few low hanging fruits and also the ones that fall on the ground, they're tearing those up as well. And lastly here, back to our beans. We got our king of garden lima beans on our arch panel trellis here. And then we've got those climbing heirloom field peas on the Horta Nova trellis over there. Now these looked a lot better as far as being kind of all standing up a few days ago. We got some hard rain, a little bit of wind. It kind of blew some of them down a little bit. Didn't break or kill any of them, but, uh, they were all standing upright and looking like they were going to all hit that wire on the trellis pretty soon and start climbing. Now some of them are laying down and we may have to give them a little help. Some of them had already found the trellis like that one right there and it's off to the races. Once they find that trellis, man, these things will climb super fast. You know, I don't know, half a foot to a foot a day sometimes it seems. Now our climbing field peas here haven't really started to climb on the Horta Nova trellis yet. Haven't started putting out little tendrils. The plants are looking good, looking nice and tall, getting a lot of foliage on them. So I imagine they'll start climbing soon. I don't know how tall these plants get before they start producing tendrils. They definitely get taller than those king of garden lima beans do before they start producing tendrils. So the climbing field peas are in pretty good shape right now. I don't think we need to help those out a whole lot. We do need to help these king of garden plants out a little bit. So what I'm going to try to do is help these out a little bit, help them kind of refine 
the trellis here and now they've fallen over a little bit. You got to be real careful doing this with these beams like this because they're really, really tender. It's not like cucumbers where you can be a little rough with them. Got to be pretty tender with these guys and some of them are kind of wrapped around each other. But if we be real careful, we can wrap them around here. And once they find that trellis, they'll start wrapping around it and they should be good to go. We just got to be a little delicate with it here, get them all back upright, and then they'll be off to the races. Okay, so we got that looking a lot better there. Got those plants pointing in the right direction, growing straight up as opposed to along the ground. Now, one more thing you can do, not something you have to do, but something you can do is to heal these beans. So when we first planted these, I talked about possibly healing them in the future. We had one viewer mention or ask, what's the benefit of healing beans? And really the only benefit in my opinion is weed suppression. So, you know, we heal different crops for different reasons. With the beans, I can come in there and throw a little soil to the, you know, middle of that row there, and that's gonna suppress any weeds along that row. It's kind of hard to get in there and weed those with them planted so closely together. So we can just heal and smother any weeds that may be coming up there and help us out with our weed management long term. So to heal these beans, I'm just gonna take my rake here and pull a little bit of soil, cover up that drip tape, and just pull a little bit of soil up there. It's not like healing taters or anything. We don't need to heal them super high. Just a little bit of dirt like that should help out with our weed control. All right, all right, all right. That's what we're going for there. Not a huge mound, just a little small mound. Just enough to cover up that tape and smother out any of those kind of hard to get to weeds along that row there. So I'm feeling good about our fall beans and peas. Haven't had any rust issues so far. I have sprayed them with liquid copper a couple times. Try to prevent anything like that from happening. But everything looks pretty green and healthy now. And once they start really climbing, once all of them start climbing, we should be in good shape. And I think we're going to get some really good production in a few months. So I hope you enjoyed the video today and don't forget to let me know in the comments below if you do indeed want to see us try fall taters once more. And if you do want to support our new raised bed project, you can do that on YouTube with the little super thanks button right there below the video, the little heart there, or via PayPal, you can send it to support at lazydogfarm.com. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.